Hey out there, this is Wake Angel 2001. <clears throat> I'm recovering from a bit of a cold, but I can still talk. Uh, okay, um... Alright, so... I know the new Star Wars movie has been really controversial for various reasons, but um... You know what? I really don't get the... I don't really get the, com the controversy complaints. Like, like, a lot of people complain about the diversity casting, which... To me, it makes no sense. I mean, I'm from New York, the most diverse city on the planet. I see more people. I see more people. I see more diversity on the train going to work every day than I saw in this movie. So you know, that's not a problem for me. And um, well, I guess I do have a complaint centering around uh, the purple-haired admiral, Vice Admiral Amelyn Holdo. Um, apparently, there's a lot of controversy around her, but um, really. I don't think that there was anything inherently wrong with her, but there is a huge, major, ruinous flaw centered around her that, um, that really gets me about the movie that I otherwise would have loved. I mean, I liked the new Star Wars. I really did. There was a lot of points where it subverted my expectations. It was able to, like, not be a rehash of previous movies. Um, it had a good overall story. Like, uh, we had a nice red herring. Like, there was some good stuff there. But there's one thing. One really bad issue centered around Admiral Holdo. Okay, so here it goes. Okay, now I'm gonna have to get into spoilers because there's really no way to actually discuss why this is such a major flaw unless I spoil it. So, if you haven't seen the Star Wars movie, maybe you don't want to listen to me right now. So, just, uh, you know, watch Star Wars. Because it is a good movie. It really is. But this is going to mess things up. <clears throat> Alright, so, uh... Alright, so, the big thing about this movie was that there's there were two plans to escape from the First Order's pursuit. You could, um... There was Poe's plan, which was to send Finn and Rose to get a code breaker so that they could infiltrate... The, the flagship of the First Order, so they could disable the light speed tracker and then escape at light speed. Um, and then there was the other plan, which was Holdo's plan, which was to keep on running from the First Order for as long as possible until they passed by that planet covered in salt, where all of the people from the ship would evacuate in troop carriers and escape pods and get to that planet while the First Order ship was busy trying to destroy the mothership. Uh, sneaking away unnoticed to Planet Salt, where they would all be able to hunker down and call for backup and be safe. Alright, as we all know, um, uh, this, this became such a big point of contention that, uh, that, that, uh, Poe was actually forced to mutiny, uh, to try and get his plan going. But why would he mutiny? Because, at an earlier point in the movie, when he walked right up to Admiral Holdo and said, So, what are we going to do? Her response was basically, Sit down, little boy. This is, this, this is a big, this is for the big people to talk about. She pulled rank on him. Because of his recent demotion after the last battle, uh, she said that he didn't, qu he wasn't in the need to know ranks anymore. And that, uh, like, like, no! Okay. Alright, this incredibly petty act is something that a bad guy would do. Like, this is some... This got me to think for most of the movie that Admiral Holdo was actually a double agent for the First Order. Like, there is no way that in this kind of crisis situation with death literally at your back door, that you're not going to give your plan that would give everybody hope. Like, you're not gonna... Not... You're not going to keep that secret. You're going to tell everybody, okay, guys, here's what we're going to do. Hunker down. Nobody tried to mutiny. Nobody tried to escape discreetly because, yeah, Finn totally tried to escape discreetly because he thought they were all going to be killed and he didn't want Ray to go to a slaughterhouse. Like, like all she had to do was tell Poe what her plan was and Poe, like, remember, later on in the movie, after the whole mutiny thing, Poe walked, um, she tells Poe what the plan is and Poe's like, oh, hey, that can work. So, like, Poe was all for this plan. He was totally good with it. There was no reason to keep it secret from him. She tells him the plan, he goes along with it. And 
we don't need to do the dangerous infiltration mission, and we don't get this scummy guy from, from Casino Planet that betrays Rose and Finn, thereby, um, thereby getting half of the Resistance killed. But why? Why did she not tell uh, Poe her plan? Well, there's really only one logical reason. If she had told Finn the plan, then the audience would have known what the plan was at, at like an early point in the movie, like barely the half hour mark. So we would have had two hours of absolutely no tension, just waiting to catch up with fate. So, but that's a major problem. Because not telling him the plan is incredibly stupid and illogical. So, in order to preserve the movie's tension, they had to get a character to do something stupid and illogical. Like, no, that, that is writing 101. This is, they should have gone back in the script as soon as they noticed it, like, like, hey, you know this big plan that the Admiral's keeping secret for the entire length of the movie? We kind of have a scene written where when it's finally revealed, Poe kind of goes right along with it because he thinks it's a good plan. So, there really is no point to her keeping it a secret at the beginning, and uh, if you kind of look at it, it would seem that her not telling him the plan is the reason why almost everybody gets killed in this movie. Like, like a simple proofreading of the script should have revealed just how stupid this plot point was. The Admiral had absolutely no reason to keep this secret, and by keeping it secret, she got half the people killed. And, and there were, again, no reason to keep it secret. There is no in-universe reason to keep it secret. They tried to justify keeping it secret by having Poe being demoted, and like saying that his demotion meant that he didn't qualify to be one of the people that would know the plan. But that's bullcrap, because there's no reason to keep this secret from the lower ranks, because, you know, this would fill people who normally are filled with despair because there's a freaking First Order fleet on their ass, and this would actually give them hope. It would let them know that, yeah, you're going to survive today, you know? So this is a major, huge, ruinous plot hole for the movie that takes a movie that I really could have loved. It could have been one of the greatest Star Wars movies I ever saw. And, like, I still liked it, like I said, but every time I think about it, this just comes in and, like, what were they thinking? This is so stupid. How would you fix this? Actually, it's very easy to fix this, really. What if we say that, um, that, that Poe proposed his disable their lights, their light speed tracker and, um, and, and, uh, and then escape at light speed thing, and the Admiral approves of that, says, that is a good plan, we'll go with that. We need a code breaker though, I know a guy. So we go, the whole movie doesn't have to be changed. The only thing that changes is that Admiral Holdo is actually agreeing with Poe's plan and going along with it. So we do the whole thing, we do the going to Casino Planet, the illegal parking, the, the, the horse stampede, uh, getting that guy from the prison, he bet um, and then he betrays, and then, at the pivotal moment when they're about to disable the light speed tracker and the guy betrays them, they're like, oh no, we were betrayed by the backup code breaker. Uh, what are we going to do? And that's when the Admiral comes up with, all right, there's a planet there that we can evacuate to and, and go into a bunker, get everybody into the pods, hopefully the First Order won't notice, and, um, and, and I'll try to distract them with the ship. So they get her into the, they get everybody into the pods and the troop transports and they go and maybe the first order uh, like maybe at first the first the first order doesn't notice but maybe maybe the cloak on one of the pods breaks and they and they notice and they start to redirect weapons fire towards the pods and then you can have the whole uh, she tries she prepares to go to light speed ignore her all the people must be on those ships and she turns around like oh crap and then she light speeds into the ship like the movie's plot unfolds in pretty much exactly the same way. The only difference is that the Admiral isn't stupid, okay? Like, the, like you don't even... The, all the scenes as they were shot would still work. Like, the whole plot of the movie would still unfold in the same way. It's just that, like, 
I know that this admiral is a huge point of contention of the movie. A lot of people hated the movie because of this admiral. And yeah, because as she's written, she's a freaking idiot. I get it. I really do. Like, this character, because of this whole not telling Poe the plan thing, she might actually be worse than Jar Jar. Yeah, I will stand by that. As she is written in this movie, her interactions with Poe Dameron, she is a, a bigger detriment to this movie than Jar Jar was to episode one. Because even though Jar Jar was an incredibly stupid character, at least on a base level, some people might have gotten a kick out of his slapstick. I mean, it's, it was pretty stupid, but he's relatively harmless. She was actively harmful. Her stupidity, though more subtle than Jar Jar's, did indeed get half of the Jedi, half of the Resistance people killed when those escape ships were blown up by the, by the Order's flagship. So yeah, I just had to get this out of my headspace because it has been bugging me since I went to see that movie. And I went to see it on the opening weekend. Like, the day it came out, that's when I saw it. So, yeah, this has been rattling around in my head. And hopefully now that I've vented my rant out onto you, uh, you guys can understand and I can finally sleep properly at night. Because, wow, I can't believe they botched a write the writing that badly. Like, wow. Alright, The Wake Angels 2001, signing off.